Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, the practical guide to living a fully engaged life. Are you ready to start living your life to the fullest? Are you ready and willing to transform yourself and your life from ordinary to extraordinary? Then welcome, my friends, to the Fully Engaged Life. Welcome back to the show, everyone, and welcome to challenge number 16 from my book, Expansion Mastery. We are now in the Earth section, and this is the third of the esoteric section practices in that level. This particular challenge is titled The Four Seasons, Nature's Cycles. The idea of the Earth level here is for us to live more naturally the way that human beings were meant to experience this life. And that means living in harmony with nature. When we live in harmony with nature, we are more in tune with everything in the universe. We are more tuned in to the natural cycles and rhythms around us. And let's face it, we're a lot healthier. Now, one of the things that I would like to interject here before we get into the actual practices of this is that it's very sad today to witness the amount of fear that has been artificially produced in regards to nature. I can remember clear back when I was a kid in the late 60s and 70s, there was this whole fear of a new ice age. America's going to turn to ice. Everything's going to be frozen. We're entering in a new ice age. And scientists use this to gather funds and to push various government agendas and things. Well, over time, that became that uh, it was global warming, right? So now the opposite was going to happen. No, an ice age never came. Nothing even remotely close ever came. But all of a sudden, they switched gears, and now they were crying about uh, uh, global warming and how everything's heating up, and they used that to, to perpetuate their agenda, and that didn't quite go as planned, especially as the years went by and their deadlines kept uh, not uh, appearing in reality. And now we have the, the whole climate change aspect Hey, are things changing the climate? Yes. Things always change in the climate on this planet. It's natural. However, are there some strange things going on right now? Yes. And some of these oddities have to do with the way that they are uh, controlling and manipulating the weather. Right? This is scientific, proven, admitted fact. It's science. Google it. The other thing is, yes, the polarities are shifting, as I spoke of previously and spoke about in the book. And this too, there's a lot of science to back this up. And you can see that this is causing some of the change. So we're caught right now in this moment between a fake reality of what uh, the governments uh, of the world are calling climate change and what is actually really happening due to uh, some sort of polarity shift in the planet. Um, do I think the poles are going to shift 180 degrees? I have no idea. I don't think so. I think it's going to be just that normal tilt when the, the planet tilts you know, 23.5 degrees and then comes back. So obviously that's going to cause a disruption in what we've become comfortable with as normal weather patterns and behaviors. It is a well-established fact that certain governments, ours included here in the United States, are using the environment and climate change specifically as a way to push forward their agenda. And this agenda is the United Nations Agenda 2030. You can go on the United Nations website and check it out. It's there for anybody to, to read about. This is not a conspiracy theory. It is a proven fact. 
So there's that. Here in California, of course, we're having these horrific and tragic wildfires. And these things are not happening because of simple natural conditions. They keep telling us, oh, well, we have no humidity and it's so dry and we have unusually hot temperatures. The temperatures are not hot at all. That's a total fabrication. Is it dry? Yes, it's dry like this every year. This is nothing new. This is nothing different. Okay, so what is igniting these fires? Faulty equipment, uh, the faulty infrastructure of PG&E. Okay, that is what is setting the majority of these, especially the worst ones, that, as far as we can tell. We've also had reports of people flying out here from places and saw one in particular from Missouri. Some guy flew out here, and started 13 fires, and then he tried to get a plane back but was arrested before he could uh, fly out. So you see it's, it's you know a lot of insanity and it's a lot of faulty, neglected infrastructure uh, combined with just natural normal conditions that are causing a lot of this. So my point here is to be cautious in regards to what you choose to believe about climate change and what's actually happening in the world. Because when a fear is developed and this fear is pointed at nature, then people will seek safety in technology and that's part of the agenda 2030 is to turn the world into a technocratic single world government and we can already see how technology is developing and creating this this entire technological world that serves to separate us from nature and reality for that matter so I also caution you in regards to tech. And a lot of it is very helpful. A lot of it's very good. Um, I'm not against tech, you know. But uh, I am against any technology that has the side effect or the sole purpose of sucking me into it and separating me from nature. Because human beings were not meant to, nor can we, survive that way. Part of protecting our humanity is to continue our deep love and connection and respect to nature. So one of the ways you can do that is to live in harmony with the four cycles. Enjoy and relax each cycle as it comes up. And this cycle is normally in the seasons. Now, some of us look at the seasons as being just four, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And others view it as five, spring, summer, Indian summer, autumn, and then winter. Either way you look at it, four cycles, five cycles, it doesn't matter. The key is to learn to relax and enjoy each season as it arises, to connect to it. Hey, the first thing people do as soon as it starts getting cold is they flip the heat on. Well, it's good for the human body to be cold at the appropriate time. Same thing in the summer when it gets hot. It's good to be able to be hot a little bit. Hey? But we are so consumed with comfort and control now that the first thing we do is we start flipping those switches. And we start to crank that dial so we crank up the air conditioning, crank up the heating. Our bodies were designed to adapt to the areas in which we live and then to... Uh, adjust accordingly and that is one of the ways that our physical form stays very healthy. My wife and I like to celebrate each season. We celebrate the spring. Everything is green because we had a bunch of rain so uh, everything that's usually golden and dry here in California becomes green and lush. So we celebrate the spring, the, the renewed energy and the break in the here it's just rain, we don't get snow. Um, and then we, we also celebrate summer. We celebrate autumn. We decorate the house for autumn. We decorate the house for winter. So we celebrate each season as we experience it naturally. And we walk in harmony with that season and a sense of mindfulness for what season it is. Because it's very enjoyable to be in tune with nature that way. Another thing you can do is to get in tune with the seasons by eating seasonal foods from your area, at least as much as you possibly can. We like to eat 
any seasonal foods. We keep track of what foods are naturally in season here, and we can grow a lot year-round here in California, so it's, it's pretty fantastic. But the key is, is where you live, certain things are going to grow at certain times of the year, and those certain things are offering the human body the nourishment it needs, especially within those normal weather conditions. See how intimately linked we are with nature? It's incredible. So if you want your health to thrive, then you want to stay away from processed foods, all the fake fast foods, fake boxed foods, all of that, and stick to real foods that are in season. Certain things grow in certain times a year, and those are the things you want to focus on eating. And then there are other various ways that you can actually mindfully participate in the seasons themselves. During the spring, we like to go visit Japan because the cherry blossoms are absolutely amazing. They are so beautiful. And it is such a magical time in Japan. And you don't have to go to Japan for the cherry blossoms, right? Spring is is taking place all over the world at the appropriate time. So you can enjoy spring in whatever manner you enjoy it. We happen to enjoy it very much in Japan. So we make special trips to go and view the cherry blossoms and just eat all of the cherry blossom flavored foods that they have and just enjoy uh, the springtime. We also enjoy the springtime here in California. It's a very beautiful time. So you can do this with each season. We also like to go to Japan in the autumn to view the leaves changing color, especially around all of the temples and shrines. It's absolutely breathtaking. But even in Upper Michigan, right, there's a lot of fantastic color change, and and there is all over the United States. So I mean, there's so many things you can enjoy. You get that nice, warm, cozy feeling, put on a, a heavy flannel shirt or a sweatshirt or a jacket or something and, and a little bit heavier footwear, keep your feet warm, and you just kind of have that warm, cozy, uh, settled-in feeling in the autumn. So we like to embrace each one of these things and enjoy them. We don't hide away in the house from them. We get out there and we do various activities, various things that help us interact with them. We may hike the mountain in the spring. Maybe another time we hike the mountain in the autumn or whatever, you know, whatever you might enjoy doing as well. So the idea is to start to live naturally. Along with this is also the the whole time of day thing. Now, this gets thrown off a bit because of daylight savings time, because it's very unnatural for us as human beings to do this. And it was a contrived thing not to help with our uh, health but more our work productivity and our consumerism. But we should also go to bed when it's dark and rise when it's early. There are times that we want to take advantage of. Basically, there's a two-hour window every night, and it changes with the season. Like spring and summer is one time, and then uh, autumn and winter is another time. And this is generally between uh, 9 p.m., to 11 p.m. and the other window is 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. midnight. And it is within that two-hour window that you want to be in bed. You want to be either deeply resting or sound asleep within that two-hour window because it's a two-hour window that allows the body to rejuvenate and regenerate. You should also not be digesting foods within that window because if the body is busy digesting food, then it is not able to use that energy towards a rejuvenation of the body itself, all the cells. So this is a time where you want to be in the room. The room needs to be completely dark. You can't have any lights, even your uh, clock right? That's shining so brightly in the room. You need to cover that up. Uh, You need to make sure that you don't have any blue light of any sort in there. You know, things like this. So it works best in the natural setting. Complete darkness, right? We got a really nice reminder of that while the power was out here in California uh, because everything was out. No street lights, no nothing. There wasn't any bit of light. Everything was completely dark, 
And um, that's how it should be. That's the natural way it would be. So you want to uh, try to limit any light that you have available in the room. And during that time, you should be resting and uh, preferably sound asleep because that is when you're going to get the most benefit out of that two-hour window. When you stay up and you're still watching TV or glued to your phone or computer or playing a video game or whatever uh, or you know, out running around town, past those hours, what happens is your body doesn't have any opportunity to rejuvenate and regenerate, and therefore it is being depleted much faster. Your health is impacted and uh, your longevity is impacted, and both of those impacts are, of course, negative. And nowhere is this easier to be recognized than in working late shifts, like if you're working the night shift where you are forced to be up and producing at high levels such as factory jobs. This is very bad for our overall health and there are plenty of studies that are out there that prove just that. So the primary idea here is to live in harmony with nature as much as we can. And we see this in a lot of other countries, even European countries, Asian countries, far more than we do in the United States these days. Uh, My wife and I travel the world and uh, we notice these types of things. So this is something to be aware of. And it could be why the United States is one of the most unhealthy nations in the world. So How can you interact with nature? What ways can you make changes in your life to live in accordance with the seasons and the cycles of day and night? When you understand and live in harmony with the natural cycles, seasons, and rhythms of nature, the body and mind thrive. Our longevity is positively impacted, and we live a much happier, healthier life. This should be beyond evident as to how important this is to living a fully engaged life. So then the challenge is this. What can you do where you live to better interact with be mindful of, and enjoy each season as it comes and goes. Sure, you may have a favorite season. For my wife and I, it is autumn, beyond a doubt. But we enjoy each season as it comes. And notice that the season arrives, and it's there to experience for a little while, and then it goes away. This is a natural rhythm of nature. It is a natural cycle of life. Things arise, they are, for a limited time, and then they go away. Very similar to the thoughts in your head, right? A thought will rise, and it will be there, and then it just kind of fades away. It's the same with emotions. It's the same with physical sensations. It's the same with nature. So we learn to appreciate the impermanence of things as well. We enjoy the spring while it is here, and then as that changes to summer, we celebrate that metamorphosis. And then as it changes to the autumn, we celebrate that. And we just keep enjoying what is as it is. This is one of the ways you can connect with and stay connected with reality. At least as we are experiencing it in this physical body and mind. So keep track of your patterns and rhythms and see if they go against those of nature, especially the sleeping cycle of day and night. It's really tough. There's so many people, and and I find that tech has something to do with this. The way it rewires the brain, you have a tendency to want to stay up late and mess around on that stuff, not doing anything necessary, anything productive or anything else. You're just wasting time. But it's unplugging you from the natural uh, cycle and rhythm and plugging you into it. 
this is not the direction that we want to go. This is not the type of life we want to live. And I know because I used to be the worst at this. I used to stay up in an attempt to relax after working a 12 to 18 hour shift, followed by running my business, teaching martial arts classes, uh, everything else that was going on. I would try to unwind sometimes and be able to sleep, and sometimes I couldn't. So the tech, however, sucks you in and and distracts you and has you staying up so late, and it's so unhealthy. And once I broke free from that, and uh, which happened when we left Michigan, we went and lived uh, in Wudong in China for a while uh, in the mountains and uh, living in a natural Taoist environment where we got rest properly uh, really helped because we've kept that ever since and we still make sure we are in bed within that two hour window and man, I f- my health came back. I feel healthier than ever. I feel so much better. Um, it, it's an amazing benefit. And I know that this is not popular with a lot of people's lifestyle, but I highly recommend you do it. And it doesn't matter what age you are. I highly recommend you do this because you will notice a massive positive impact on your health and well-being. So instead of fearing nature, embrace it. Instead of locking yourself away and trying to act in resistance to the natural cycles, enjoy them, embrace them, celebrate them, live in harmony with nature. Do not underestimate the tremendous impact that this has on your capability to living fully engaged. Please make sure and visit me at www.expansionmastery.com. You can get your autographed copy of Expansion Mastery there, as well as my revised and expanded ebook, Reinventing Yourself Through Realignment. Soon, the Breath Mastery program will be available for you. I hope you enjoy that. That's going to be a game changer, I guarantee it. And make sure that you help us out on social media share the show and I see a number of you who are doing so so I would like to thank you for that I want you to know that I see that you are indeed sharing these things that you are subscribing giving me the thumbs up it is not going unnoticed I promise you and I appreciate your efforts so much thank you for supporting me and for supporting expansion mastery and our ability to help others to live a fully engaged life Until next time, my friends, I wish you the very best in all of your practices and your life. Take care.